Hi, my name is Alan Smith and in this webcast we're going to look at creating an image similarity search using Spotify Annoy and using PyTorch. Now you don't have to use PyTorch with Spotify Annoy, you can use a different neural network so if you prefer using TensorFlow feel free to use TensorFlow. So Spotify Annoy is available on GitHub and Annoy is actually an acronym for Approximate Nearest Neighbor Oh Yeah. But as it was developed by Spotify, the correct pronunciation is probably Approximate Nearest Neighbor. Oh, yeah. It's basically a C++ library that provides Python bindings that makes it really easy to consume uh, from a Python project. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the algorithms of how Spotify and I works. But if you want to understand more about it, there's this fantastic YouTube video here, Approximate Nearest Neighbors and Vector Models, Introduction to Annoy, which is a presentation by Eric Berhardson, who actually developed Annoy when he was working at Spotify. And you can see in the example, he's using it to be able to identify nearest food pictures. Annoy is available on GitHub if you do want to download the source code, but it's very easy to install in Python just by using pip. So basically the theory of what I'm going to be doing in this webcast is I'm going to be working with a pre-trained network in PyTorch. And the network I'm going to be using is ResNet18, which is a convolutional neural network. So in a convolutional network, or CNN, you have these different convolution layers that do things like edge detection, shape detection, and finally, as you get towards the end of the network, you've got the feature detection. Now normally if you're doing image classification you take the output of the feature detection layer and you feed it into a linear or fully connected layer and that comes out with the actual predictions. Here I've got an example with just two classifications of a cat and a dog. So if we can remove that final linear layer, the fully connected layer, what we'll get out from the network is actual floating point values for the actual features. I've only indicated a few in this particular image. But with ResNet 18, we'll have 512 of these feature vectors. And it's these feature vectors that are used by Spotify Annoy to do the nearest neighbor search. So the process of building an index, we take a folder of images, we feed that through the modified convolutional neural network, which is already trained with existing weights, and that's gonna give us out our feature vectors. We then feed those into an Annoy index. And once we've done that with a few thousand images, we can save the index as a file. We can then use this index to find similar images by loading up the index file, taking the source image and passing it through the same network to identify the feature vectors, and then feeding those feature vectors into a NOI to find the nearest neighbors. And what we'll get as an output is a list of images that have similar features to the input image. So hopefully those images should look similar to the source image. Okay, so Google has the option to search for similar images. Uh, I'm in Google Image Search here. If I click on this camera icon, then I can upload a file. And what I'm working here is the uh, pets images data set within the dogs section. I can select this dog. And Google's basically telling me this is a Labrador retriever. And you can see that it's found similar images, um, you know, similar photos of uh, a dog uh, that looks fairly similar to the dog that I uploaded, but also in the same position. You can see that uh, quite a few of them have also got a grass uh, background with them. So what I'm gonna do is see how we can build our own image similarity search. We're gonna be using PyTorch and we're gonna be using Spotify Annoy, which is a nearest neighbor search algorithm. So within Visual Studio, I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna select Python application. And I'll call the project Spotify Annoy Similar Image Search. Okay, so I'm gonna set up my Python environments here. Here I've got an environment of Python 3.7. What I'm gonna do is to add a new environment that I'm gonna use uh, to install PyTorch and also to install Spotify Annoy. So I'm gonna give this a name of Annoy Demo Env. Python 3.7 should be fine. I'm gonna make this environment available globally and I'm gonna drop it in the Python environments folder. Okay, so that's created my environment for me. I'm gonna open a command prompt and I'm gonna install uh, the various pip packages. So you can see what we've got installed by default. I'm gonna need to install Torch. Because we're gonna be using a PyTorch pre-trained network to be able to analyze images and generate the features that are gonna go into Spotify Annoy. 
I don't need to set up the GPU and CUDA. Uh, most of the workload here is going to be loading the file and um, there's not going to be that much work in actually classifying the image or detecting the features using the network. So you don't need a GPU uh, to uh, run through this. It takes quite a while for the Torch install to complete, so I'm going to pause the recording whilst this is running. OK, that went fine. I'm getting a message that I can upgrade PIP uh, if I want to. I'm going to skip that. I'm also going to need Torch Vision uh, because that's where the um, pre-trained models are located and we're going to be working with images. So you can see here that we've got the relevant components installed. I'm going to be working with images and Pillow is already installed, so that's fine. I don't need to do that as a separate install. But I will need to install Annoy. And that went fairly, fairly quickly. You may well get problems with this. You will need to have the C compiler installed. So if you do see any errors uh, coming up here, it's maybe re related to not having the uh, C compiler installed correctly. So hopefully I've got all the pip packages there that I need. Okay, so I'm gonna rename this file to 01 build annoy index. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scan through some images. Uh, we're gonna create the Spotify annoy index and we're gonna save it down. And then we can have another uh, process or another script file that's gonna load that index uh, and then do the image uh, searching. Um, so it's good to be able to create the index and, and save it out as a file as a separate step. Okay, so I'm gonna to need to have an images folder that I'm gonna be working with. And I'm gonna be using um, the dog images from this cats versus dogs data set. I've included a link uh, to this data set in the, uh, the description. So what this contains in the pet images folder, we've got cats and dogs, and in the dogs folder, we've got um, thousands and thousands of images of dogs. So in Explorer, I can navigate to this folder and you can see all of the various uh, dog images uh, that we've got. So I'm gonna copy this folder path, drop to Visual Studio, that's gonna be my images folder. However, I'm just gonna replace the backslash with uh, a forward slash because um, the backslash is sometimes used as a, an escape character. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is to get a list of all of the images in that folder. So I'm importing OS and the images is gonna be os.listdir and then specify that image folder. So for each of these images, uh, we want to pass the image through a pre-trained network that's hopefully gonna be able to detect the relevant features in the dog images. So from Torch Vision, I'm gonna import models and transforms and I'm also gonna import Torch. So we're going to be using uh, the ResNet 18 network, which is um, a fairly simple uh, image classification network. So what I'm going to do is to define the weights is equal to models.resnet18 weights. Then I'm selecting ImageNet1K version 1. I can then create my model. So I'll define that as being models.resnet18 and uh, select the appropriate weights. So we're going to need to transform the image before it goes into the neural network. So I'm generating a new transform and I'm going to specify that we're going to resize the image to 224 by 224 pixels and then transform that to a torch tensor. I can also specify models.eval and that's going to put the model into the detection state rather than the training state. Now, if we're going to use Spotify Annoy for nearest neighbor identification based on the features that are being detected in the image, we want to know that the neural network is picking out appropriate features. So I'm going to run a quick test on this um, just to see what type of predictions it's making with the dogs that we've got within our folder. So I'm going to iterate through all of the images that we've got in that folder. I'm going to need to import image from uh, Pillow because we're going to be loading the images. And I'm going to open the image by joining the images folder and the name of that image file. So the image will be in bitmap format, so we need to use the transform that we've created to be able to transform that image into an input tensor. So some of the images uh, didn't have uh, three channels, red, green, blue. Uh, they maybe had a transparency channel, or maybe they were, they were grayscale images. I'm basically going to skip those and only take images that are RGB images. Uh, so that's uh, where the input tensor size on the uh, dimension one is equal to three. And if that is the case, uh, we'll send the input tensor through the model and that will give us the output tensor. 
So what we can do now is print the prediction of the image. So I'm saying that the image was predicted as, and then I'm using the weights and the metadata provides the actual categories, which are the strings for the categorization. And then we look at the arg max of the output tensor, which will give us the most likely prediction from the model. So I'll just add this input here uh, to block the thread of execution uh, so we can go through the images one by one. So let's see what that neural network thinks of these dogs. So 0.jpg was predicted as a Scottish Deerhound. 1.jpg was a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. 10 was predicted as a Walker Hound. And 100 was predicted as a Labrador Retriever. Now I'm not a real expert on dog breeds, uh, but you can see as we're going through all of these images, you can see that it's not just saying that this image is a dog, it's actually coming out with the breed of dog, with a few exceptions here. So this basically tells us um, that the neural network is very good at being able to predict the breeds of dogs, which means that the features in the final convolution layer of this network are going to be uh, features uh, that are going to allow us to distinguish uh, between different types of dogs and hopefully also be able to identify similar dogs. So if I stick a breakpoint here and run this, we can analyze the output of the model. So if I drop um, output tensor, into the immediate window. We can see the details of this tensor. Uh, you can see that there's a whole bunch of floating point numbers that we've got here. And the actual shape of this is one by 1000. And there's basically a thousand different uh, classes uh, that this model can uh, predict against. So if I drop in the weights metadata categories, drop that into the immediate window, you can see that we've got um, basically a thousand of these actual uh, items present in the actual uh, string categories. So these are all of the things that the model can uh, predict. Now what I want to do is instead of getting the actual predictions, I want to get the actual features uh, that the network is using uh, to make those predictions. And in order to do that, we need to modify the model slightly. So what I can do here after we've created the model is basically print the model. So we can kind of evaluate the different layers within the model. So here we can see at the end of the model, we've got this linear layer. And this linear layer is taking in 512 features and it's giving out a thousand features. And what it's doing is it's taking in all of the actual features that have been detected by the last convolutional layer. And then it's using this to classify into the thousand different classes uh, that we've got. So what I need to do is to get rid of this linear layer and replace it uh, with something that's going to give us those 512 output features. So I'm going to import the NN module from Torch and replace the last fully connected layer with an NN.identity layer. So let's run this again. So here we can see uh, that we've just got this FC as NN identity. And what this will do is basically pass out the 512 features as 512 floating point numbers. So if I drop a breakpoint uh, here, we can run to that breakpoint. I can just clear this and we can look at the output tensor again. And you can see here that we've got uh, a one by 512 uh, tensor. And these are the 512 features that we can use in the Spotify Annoy index. Okay, so we're gonna need to create an index. So what I'm gonna need to do is to import that. So from Annoy import Annoy index. So let's create the in annoy index. It's going to be equal to annoy index. And we can specify the number of inputs or the number of features that we're going to use in this. That's going to be 512. That needs to match the number uh, that we've got from the network. Then also the method uh, that we're going to use for finding the nearest neighbor. And I'm going to call that angular. Okay. Now, when we get down here, uh, the output tensor, we're no longer going to be using this to create a prediction. What we're going to be doing is adding the output te tensor to the annoy index. So I can take annoy index dot, uh, and then we've got the add item. 
And the item, uh, the ID of the item is going to be an integer, which is the ID of the particular image that we're processing. And because I'm using a range here, um, instead of uh, doing a for each image, then I've got the actual count on which image it is. So I can just pass in I for that. And then the output tensor, what I'm going to do is to drop in the output tensor. However, because of the model can process multiple images, I'm just going to use the um, zero index on that output tensor, which will be the first uh, output. We've only got one output anyway, um, so that should uh, should work fine. Now, to give us an idea of how fast this is running, I can basically say if um, the i percent 100 is equal to uh, zero. So basically, if it's a multiple 100, then we can just basically print that we have um, processed however many images. And then uh, once we've uh, run through and added all of those to the index, we will need to build the index. So I can specify annoy index.build. And we specify the number of trees uh, that we are going to be uh, creating. I'm going to use the value of 10. Um, I've not really experimented that much with different uh, different values. For more complex predictions, you may want to increase that. That will increase the um, detection time and also the size of the model there. So you maybe want to experiment uh, with different uh, models. And then we can save the index. And I'm going to save it as dog index.ann. Not sure if that's the official um, extension for Anoi indexes, but I'll use it anyway. Okay, so let's build this index. So it's going to take uh, quite a while uh, to run through these. There are 12,473 uh, images uh, there. Uh, there's originally 12,500. I think I removed uh, a few uh, there uh, that were maybe incorrectly uh, formatted. You can see it's, uh, it's getting on for processing a thousand uh, on there. As I mentioned, I'm not using a GPU. A GPU would make, maybe make it a bit faster in actually doing the um, obtaining the features, running the neural network. However, there's so much file operations taking place here, reading the images, that uh, it probably won't make that much difference at using a GPU. Basically, it means if you don't have a big GPU at home, you can just run through this on the CPU and it will still work fine. Okay, so we can see that that completed. Um, probably took about five or ten minutes uh, for that to run. It didn't take too long. Now, if I open that in the file explorer, you can see that we've got the dog index.ann. You can see it's about 26 megabytes, so it's a pretty compact uh, file uh, that we've got there. When you think about, you know, the weights of neural networks and uh, and things like that. So what we can do now is we can use this index uh, to be able to find similar dog images within that dog uh, data set. Okay, so I'm going to add a new Python module, 0, 2, um, find similar images. Uh, let's drop that on. And I can reuse some stuff that we've got from the first module. So I'm going to need to import OS, pill, torch, torch vision, pretty much all of this stuff, I think. Um, so let's basically copy this across. Um, I'm also going to need to define the image folder and get a list of these images. So I'm going to use the same images uh, for actually uh, testing this. And we're also going to need to create the same model uh, to use for analyzing these images. So I'm going to select um, this chunk here. We don't really need to print the model, but we do need to do model.eval and specify the actual transforms. So let's copy this across. Okay, so working with the index, what I need to do is to basically create the same index. And what I can do now is basically load the one that I created in the previous script. Because my typing's not that great, I'm just going to copy the file name here. Drop that in there, so that should give us our index. So I'm going to generate an image grid uh, for displaying these images. So this is going to be uh, using Perl image dot uh, new, and I'm going to specify this is going to be a RGB image, and it's going to be a thousand by a thousand. 
And I use that uh, to basically generate a grid uh, and display these, these various images. So what we can do is basically iterate through the images, load the images, get the input tensor. Um, if the input tensor um, size dimension one is equal to three, then we get the output tensor here. So all of this code is gonna be the same. So let's copy this across here. Then what we want to do uh, with our output tensor is actually use this to search within the images. So what I need to find is the nearest neighbors is gonna be equal to, and then we're gonna take an I index dot, and then we've got this get nearest neighbors by vector. And what I'm gonna do is pass in um, the output tensor Again, uh, we want to take the zero item from that. Then we want to specify how many uh, items we are going to bring back. Uh, I'm going to have a grid of 25 images, and the first one is going to be the original image, so I'm going to bring back uh, 24 of these images there. And that will hopefully give us uh, the list of nearest neighbors. So that will give us the 24 images that have the most similar features to the features of the image that we sent through the network. I'll speed up the coding here. What I'm going to do is to resize the original image to 200 by 200. I'm going to import the image draw in Pillow. And then I'm going to create an image draw for that image. And I'm going to use it to draw a rectangle around that particular image. I'll select the outline is red and the width is equal to 8. And then we can paste that image at the 0, 0 coordinates in the image grid. We can then iterate through the 24 results. Uh, so the search image, I'm gonna open that from the same path. But what I'm gonna specify is that we're using the index from the nearest neighbor's results. So I'm using NNS and then square brackets J to get the appropriate image that the Spotify Annoy Index has come back with. I'm then gonna resize that image to 200 by 200, and I'm gonna paste that one in at the appropriate coordinates uh, for that particular image. So once I've done that, I should have an image that contains um, the original image and then the 24 nearest images in a grid format. So what we can do is to save these images down in a folder. So I'm gonna create a new folder called image dump, and then we can do image grid.save, specify image dump, and then specify image. And then this is gonna be I, which is the counter of the loop that we are running through. Okay, so I'm gonna set this as the startup file, um, the find similar images, and let's run this. Okay, module is not callable. I forgot to, when I was doing the image draw, this should have been image draw.draw. So let's see if it works now. Okay, so what I should be able to do now is to look in the image dump folder. And what we should be able to see is the images building up here. So if I double click on one of these, we can open it in the photos viewer. What we've got here is this is the original image that I've drawn the red box around. You can see that the nearest neighbor, the closest one, uh, was the same image as we passed in as the input. That isn't really a surprise. But what's interesting here uh, is uh, we've got all of these dogs. Uh, I've no idea what dog breed this is, but here uh, you can see that we've got similar dogs. These all look fairly similar uh, to this particular dog here. And we can go to the next one and you can see that, um, you know, this is the original image, but this one looks very, very similar uh, to this one in terms of the position of the dog and the actual dog type. And you can see that most of these are the similar uh, dog type. Again, this dog here, uh, it seems as a duplicate of these images. So these two uh, were basically picked up, but all of the dogs do seem to be the same uh, breed of dog here. And as we go through these images, uh, we can see uh, that we do have, um, you know, similar uh, dogs coming up in these uh, particular images there. This one, interestingly, has a kind of nature background. There's some grass there. And the ones that it's picked up, quite a lot of those do have uh, grass in the background. I don't know if these grass features are kind of um, overruling the dog features, because we've got, you know, some dogs here uh, that don't uh, look entirely similar to that one. But with the Dalmatians, it's doing a pretty good job uh, in picking up uh, different uh, Dalmatians. This dog uh, is some kind of a uh, crossbreed for a, a Dalmatian. You can see it's got larger spots there, but most of these uh, do look uh, very similar to the input uh, image. 
So this uh, image search is doing a fantastic job of being able to detect similar dogs in this cats and dogs uh, data set. This is interesting, this dog here uh, is behind a mesh fence and you can see that all of these similar uh, images that have come back are also uh, behind a mesh fence there. Same with this, uh, this one here. So you can see the mesh fence uh, is being identified as a significant feature when it's looking for these similar uh, images here. Okay, so takeaways from this. Um, I was surprised how easy it is uh, to use um, the Spotify uh, index. So I'll just uh, basically uh, run through the code. We need to do a pip install with Annoy. We then uh, are gonna create a new uh, Annoy index here, specify the number of inputs that we've got and the type that we are using. I've not explored working out with different uh, evaluation types. We then basically use uh, a neural network to be able to get out the features. I've used PyTorch. Um, you could probably use TensorFlow or use something else. What you will need to do though, is to modify the network. So if it is a classification network, you're not getting out the actual results of that. You're getting out the actual features, which is kind of the convolution layer before the um, last fully connected layer that's going to do the actual um, classification on those. So you want to get uh, the, the actual uh, features. Um, you then basically add those uh, features uh, to this annoy index, and then you can basically build and save this. You can experiment with uh, different numbers of trees. You can also experiment uh, with different options uh, for creating the, in the index instead of using the Angular uh, that I have uh, used. And then in the detection, um, we're just basically going to uh, you know, create a new index, load it up from one of these uh, pre-saved files, and then uh, basically uh, run through uh, using the same network and the same network configuration to generate the features. And then we're just doing this get NNS by vector, get nearest neighbors uh, by vector, passing in uh, the vector uh, that contains uh, the output features. And then we can just basically iterate through the results and you know, display those as you wish. I have experimented with this in different uh, domains. Um, you will need uh, to be using a model that is trained to identify the appropriate features. And the Resonate 18 is trained on many, many different uh, dog breeds. I'm not sure how well it would work with cats. Also, if we wanted to do like similar cars, you know, would it be able to detect all of the different features that related to cars? So in some cases, um, you may need to choose a more domain specific uh, model. I would guess that this would not be that great for facial recognition because it doesn't have enough feature data rela relating to human faces. So if you did want to do uh, find similar faces in photos, then maybe look for a model uh, that contains those appropriate weights or maybe even train your own model uh, to be able to identify the face uh, features. I may look at that in a future uh, webcast.